Welcome back. Hopefully this is a short video on missing data. I'm just going to show you a bunch of code here. So this is how you would do multiple imputation in R. Like I said, I have made this very, very easy. So how you start is you would perform a regression as you normally would. Of course, you want to visualize the data. And I would strongly recommend you don't look at the parameter estimates or the statistical significance or anything like that at this point because it doesn't make sense. You have missing data. And then once you do that, you can use the impute.me function and it requires just a couple of arguments. One is the model that you use. So in this case, we've used regression, which, is, which we called lm.model. So you include as the first argument the object that you're doing and is and I think I've, I designed it so that it should work not just with LM, but hopefully it also works with random forest. And as we do mixed models, it's going to work with lemur and let's see what else do we have and GLM for generalized linear models. Hopefully it'll work in all those situations. Crossing my fingers that it will. Data equals D just as we always do. And then predictors equals muscle dot gain. So let's see what that, uh, at that point, though, that's where you put which auxiliary variables you either want to include or which auxiliary variables you either want to exclude. And so um, here what I'm saying is I'm saying, all right, look at the muscle gain variable. And then right next to it, we have keep equals false, which says use all the variables in the data set except muscle dot gain. If instead I said keep equals T, that would say uh, use only muscle gain to impute the missing data. And then silent equals F. That basically, um, so the algorithm naturally kind of gives you updates as it goes along and says, hey, I've performed this many imputations. And so silent equals F, hopefully, um, I haven't actually looked at this function for a long time. Uh, hopefully silent equals F says, um, tells you, or prevents it from putting out that information. And then once you do that, you can do imputed.estimates to see what is contained in that function. And then, oh, you can look at the comments there. And so if we were to do summary LM model dollar sign coefficients, that shows the estimates without imputation. And if we were to do the same thing with the muscle.gain, so in the LM.model, we looked at muscle gain missing. Now. Fortunately, we have muscle gain without the missing data, so we know what the answer should be. And Okay, and then I will show you the results of that here in a minute. So before I present the results, I want you to think about going back to our first lecture about this decision criteria. I want you to think in your head how different is enough to justify multiple imputation. So again here, we're looking at muscle gain. So if the differences between treatment and control groups in muscle gain is different by more than blank, or if the difference in estimates between the missing and the non-missing data is more than blank, I care. And again, that's not a statistical question. Um, oh, let me get back to that in just one second. So fortunately for us, the metric is intuitive. So you're talking about inches of muscle gain. I believe it's in the bicep. And so I might say, for example, all right, multiple imputation, let's say um, the difference between, and we're talking about a difference of differences here. So the difference between treatment and control group in multiple imputation relative to the missing data, or I'm sorry, list-wise deletion, if the difference in treatment versus control is more than, if the difference of the different, okay, you know what, I'm just, forget about it. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to talk about that, but let's just say that the Cohen's, the difference in Cohen's D estimates is more than 0 0.05, for example. Um, in other words, if uh, you are biased by more than 0 0.05, I consider that big enough that I would use the multiple imputation. But some questions to consider before doing that is what is the cost of multiple imputation? And basically, I'm inviting you to do a sensitivity analysis here. So it may not matter. Uh, we, it may be more effort than it's worth to do multiple imputation it, because it's a lot easier to do list-wise deletion. But at the same time, what is the cost of doing multiple imputation? Well, it might be an extra three or four seconds of computer time. It also may require some 
extra explanation in your manuscript. Well, that's actually not that big of a cost. cost. What is the cost of doing list-wise deletion? Well, the cost could be huge because you could have super biased estimates. So you might ask yourself, considering these situations, how much bias am I willing to accept? And so I have set tentatively a Cohen's D, a standardized difference of 0.05. And if it were to be a unstandardized difference, let's say the bias is more than a quarter of an inch in bicep size. Okay, so with that, let's look at the results. So the top shows the imputed estimates. Uh, so if we were to look at, let's see. All right, so these are the estimates. So this requires some explanation. The very top estimate here at the very top is the difference between treatment and control groups when we've imputed the data. The one just below it, the 0.189, the rewards, rewards, negative 0.189, that is the observed difference between treatment and control group uh, if we were to not impute the data, just using the data as is. So that's, that's I don't know, a sizable difference. Now earlier I said a 0.2 inch difference. Um, and in retrospect, I probably sh should have been a whole lot more conservative because um, just now I'm thinking back to this. Oh, I don't have it. Okay, it was on the last slide. Um, probably what I should have done is considered it in terms of Cohen's D. Um, but you live and you learn. So I don't think I was conservative enough in my decision criteria. But now let's look down here below. So the actual difference between them is negative 0.0079. And our multiple imputation estimate, which was negative 0 0.04, is much closer to that 0 0.0079 than the one that did not have any imputations at all. So visually, what does this look like? So uh, on the left is the code that I used to generate this, and on the right are three different plots. So the first plot shows the difference in intercepts. The middle one shows the difference in slope for the motivation, and the far right one shows the differences in rewards, and I'm not sure why I didn't uh, include the raw data here. I should have, but I didn't. This is a bad mistake on my part. Um, yeah, why did I do that? Oh, you know why? Because we have multiple imputations. So then you have to choose which of those imputations you want to represent in there, which I just got an idea for plotting missing data. Oh, that could be a paper. Anyway, moving on. So across all cases, what you see is list-wise deletion. The middle error bar is much larger, or in the far right condition, it's much smaller than the other two, whereas the multiple imputation and the full data set are fairly close um, across the board, which is cool. So go ahead and take your time looking at that code, make sure you understand it. So are these estimates appreciably different? Again, based on your decision criteria, what would you decide to do? So based on mine, I would decide, uh, if I were to stick to my decision criteria, I would say, yeah, let's go ahead and stick with the list-wise deletion. But like I said, um, that may not have been the appropriate thing to do, especially given that there is a consistent overestimation of the effects here. So with that, let's go ahead and turn you to do some practice here. So what I want you to do is use the NSDUH data set and build the following multiple regression model. Impairment equals distress plus uh, MI, which MI doesn't stand for multiple imputation, it stands for mental illness in this situation, plus depression in the past year plus major depression. And so to save time on the imputations, be sure to sample only 1,000 observations. If you got time, go for it. If your computer is the size of a tablet, it's probably going to take longer than you want to do. You know who you are. And then perform five imputations. Um, and then be sure to graph the above model using flex plots and then identify how the estimates are different. So practice, go! I'm pretending the video is paused to remind you to pause your video and do it yourself. And welcome back. All right, let's go ahead and look what my R code was and see if you got something similar. Now, granted, we're probably going to have 
Let's see, what did I ask you to do? Sample only 100 observations. If you were to do true random sampling, your estimates would be different than mine because you would use a random seed. But anyway, so there's the top. I loaded the data set. I modeled it using depression, but I used only the first 1,000 observations of NSDUH. And then I use flex plot and the bottom right graph shows it. We all know that NSDUH is messed up and using regression to fit it won't work, but that's all right, we're getting there. And then imputed, we're gonna use the impute.me function and supply it with the model argument. And then we can say imputed comma one through three. And I believe, you know, I don't remember what that actually, oh, <laughs> there it is right there. So right at the bottom, it shows you the estimates of the um, beta weight, the left column standard error, and then the T statistic. And then we can look at the summary model dollar sign coefficients. Oh, the reason why I did the one through three, because I didn't want you to look at the P values, because we're still not sure. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense at this point, because you know we have done multiple testing we have multiple parameter estimates, so it just doesn't make sense. So that's why I did one through three. Anyway, so if we were to look at it, uh, the intercept is 0.85 without imputation, with imputation it's 0.83. Uh, mental illness slope is 15.47 versus 15.52. And going down, the estimates actually look very, very similar. So this is one situation where I would say, shoot, uh, especially with the NSDUH data set where it has like 45,000 observations, I'd be inclined to just say, hey, those estimates are so close to one another that I don't even care about multiple imputation. All right, so practice. Now what I want you to do is run a model of your choice using the NSDUH data set. And then just as we did before, compare estimates before and after multiple imputation and ask yourself how they differ. So with that, I'm gonna pause the video. Just kidding, I'm actually not, because that's the end of our video. So go ahead and conclude this video, run it on your own, come back, we'll talk about it, and we'll talk about how amazing, ugh, excuse me, and we will talk about how amazing multiple imputation is, how amazing it is that we can have these resources to estimate the unbiased estimates of these things, and we will see you next time.